This is Coogan Cassius for the Cassius and Herald Show here on Box Nation. With me, I've got Liverpool's very own David Price. Looking very summery. How are you, David? All right? It's summertime, yeah. Feeling good. Absolutely. Um, now, David, obviously, uh, you were scheduled to fight. Um, it's been pushed back a little while. You'll be fighting for the European title 17th of July. So, uh, a little update on the injury situation at the moment. Yeah, I picked, picked an, um, an injury up in my neck and training, which would have prevented me from sparring, you know, for... for out of the four weeks of sparring we had planned, I probably would have been able to spar for one week, and it wouldn't have been enough to the, to be prepared for, for you know any fight, let alone you know my homecoming fight where it was important for me to to get back in and look good and convince people um, you know that I've still got what it takes. So uh, it was disappointing, but then you know the, every cloud has, has a silver lining, they say, and, and my opportunity came in the form of a. A European title shot, which we uh, we lost the pace bids, so we'll have to travel to Germany. But you know, it's it's a great opportunity all the same. Who will you be facing for that European title? Erkan Tepe. Um, uh, I think he's a German-based Turk. I know I know he's German-based. I think he is Turkish descent. Um, Fourteen and all nine KOs. He's got first round stoppage wins over Martin Rogan, Michael Sprott. Um, you know, he seems to be. Going, going through everyone to put in front of him, so it's a, it's a good test. I mean, obviously, this um, period of time over the last couple of years, you kind of wanted to come back to the Echo, didn't you, and sort of exercise a few demons there uh, from when you were last there, but you'll get your opportunity to do that. Yeah, the, the, that's going to happen. You know, um, it, it's, not, it's not like uh, I'm in a time frame where I have to go back. I mean, Rather sooner than later, because I don't want to be forgotten completely, uh, which I doubt has happened. But you know, I think if I can get the European title, which I'm confident I will, that's something to bring home. You know, I've got something to show for me time away from from the city, and um, you know, it'll make any fight that I do have when I come back a, a lot more meaningful. So, a lot, a lot of um, positives to take from this opportunity. Heavyweight scene at the moment, uh, domestically and also. Uh, internationally, it's starting to really take off. It has been for the last year. We saw Deontay Wilder make his first defence of his WBC title against uh, Eric Molina recently and uh, come under some sort of criticism. Uh, took him nine rounds to take him out, but how did you assess his performance? Yeah, I, I and again, I was one who, who wasn't impressed by the performance, only because the, the quality of the opposition in front of him. Now, it, it wasn't Eric Molina's fault that he wasn't world championship standard, but you know, Deontay Wilder, he, he, he should have dealt with Eric Molina like he dealt with the opponents earlier in his career, but because it was a world title fight, he might have, might have had that extra pressure, he might have been under pressure fighting at home for the first time in front of a lot of people. There's a lot of, lot of different scenarios which might have been the cause of his so-called underperformance, but you know, I've seen a few, a few chinks in his armour myself but you know uh, me, me my opinion hasn't really changed them much from before that fight anyway because you know I've I've, I've never thought Dante Wilder is going to be undisputed heavyweight champion although I do, do believe he's a worthy champion for his performance against the the main Stavane but I do believe that WBC belt will change hands and, and I did think that even when he when he first won the belt I think it'll change hands a couple of times. The way that Deontay Wilder obviously got himself into position to fight for the world title, you know, by blowing everyone out inside four rounds, um, 32 something fights. Um, would you say that was an ideal way in preparation to defending your belt? Because obviously winning the belt's one thing, but keeping it is uh, or can be a completely different story. Apparently so, yeah. I mean, one, you know, one day hopefully I'll find out how, how, how much diff more difficult it is to defend the world title than, than to win it. Um, Deontay Wilder's run up to, to his title challenge. It, some of his opponents were, were farcical, obviously, but that said, he done what he had to do to these people, you know, and uh, no matter who you've got in front of you, if you're knocking someone out, you've got to, you, you're carrying power, and there's no doubt about it, he's a ferocious puncher. Um, maybe the Stavane fight did flatter him a little bit because Stavane's come out and said he had problems with hydration or whatever. And now after watching the Molina fight, you're thinking, well, maybe did, you know, did that fight flatter 
don't say Wilder was he in the right place at the right time, but you can't say you take anything away from him because he, he performed when it mattered and he, and he proved people wrong that he could box. So um, keeping the title proved not difficult for him, but but tricky really. And Molina was a bit of a nuisance, and he didn't have a, he didn't really have a plan B. Don't say Wilder in that fight. Um, but he, he probably learned from it, and we'll see, see where he goes from there. At some point this year, we're expecting to see, obviously, Tyson Fury, uh, who's mandatory to Klitschko, uh, those two get it on this year. We spoke to you about this before in, in Germany. Um, Tyson's probably due his shot, you know, he's put himself into that mandatory situation. Um, can he make it awkward for Klitschko? Can he offer something that Klitschko's previous opponents in the last few years haven't been able to offer? Yeah, of course he can. You know, he's got the advantages he's got over Klitschko are his, um, his youth and his, and his size. He's probably going to be heavier than Klitschko. He's taller than him. He's got longer arms than him. Um, and he could make it difficult for Klitschko. Obviously, the the test will be when the right hand starts landing, if it does, and, and, and how Fury responds to it. But he could make things really messy for Klitschko in that fight. And, Vladimir is used to being able to lean on smaller opponents and, you know, get away with that type of thing. Uh, Fury could make that difficult, but uh, I still believe it, it's a, it's a big ask for Tyson Fury to win the fight. But you know, he he's worked his way into position for that fight and uh, you know deserves a shot and, and good luck to him. Because obviously you signed with um, the Sowlands, uh in Germany and. You've been off the UK scene for a little while. Do you kind of not get the feeling you're the you're the forgotten man of the heavyweight scene? But because you're not on everyone's eyes here as much, um, how do you feel about that? It doesn't bother me to be honest, because um, it's coming up to the time where I am going to be back on mainstream UK. You know, um, especially after this fight. Um, so it's not it's not an issue for for me. I, I'm not I'm not one who craves attention. It doesn't bother me as long as I can get in the ring, perform, and and you know put food on the table with with the money I've earned from the fight. I couldn't care if any any of my fights weren't on the telly again as long as I can earn a living. You know that's the main thing. But you know uh, I think think once once I win this title, I'll be back on people's lips more. And people will be wanting to see me involved in some big uh, domestic fights. I remember when you were obviously a few fights into your professional career, and you know, again, I've spoke to you about this before. There was um, a lot of hype around you, David. You know, you were steamrolling everyone that was coming in your direction, and then you suffered them two defeats, and, and, and things quickly changed for you. Um, do you see similarities between that sort of hype you had back there to what's going on with Anthony Joshua at the moment? No, because um, I think Anthony Joshua was on is on a bigger scale. I think there's a, bit, a bigger amount of hype, and you'd have to say that's expected because he was an Olympic champion, um, and which which adds to the hype. And he and he is, you know, he's doing a great job. So you you, you can um, you can say it is. It can be over the top, but, but it's to be expected. I'm not surprised at the hype. Um, but yeah, it, it's natural when when a heavyweight's coming through and, and he's blasting people out. It's, it gets people excited. That's what they want to see, and it's natural for people to build their hopes up and you know build it up for a, a, and set it up for a big fall, so to speak, which is what happened in my case. Um, that's the nature of the sport. So um, you know, I think uh, I think this is on a grander scale than mine. What would you say to the people that say, uh, since your Tony Thompson defeats, that David Price won't ever be the same fighter again? Can I swear? <laughs> <laughs> you can say you can say what you want. I'm That's sure they'll just they'll, just, no. they'll bleep it out here. No, no. Um, I, I, to be honest, anyone who's watched me fight since the Tony uh, the Tony Thompson fight, who knows boxing. We'll see that I'm already a better fighter than I was when I fought Tony Thompson. It's like night and day. When you watch my best performance up till that point against Sam Sexton, if I was to fight the David Price of the, the Sam Sexton fight, I don't think he'd lay a glove on me. You know, I've improved so much with my movements, my 
me ding, crash me ding positioning. And people, people can't notice it because they don't know what I'm doing in a day in, day out in the gym. And, and these are small, intricate things that I'm working on. To, and to people who like boxing and just like seeing big punches landed and obvious, obvious things happening in the ring, you know, they won't notice improvements in defence, ring positioning, your footwork, and people who do know boxing will. So people who think I won't be the same fighter, I say, you don't know boxing. You don't know shit about boxing. <laughs> All right, Roger Mayweather. <laughs> David's Roger Mayweather impression. Um, David, there was a, a rumours circling about a couple of months ago that there was a potential fight with Derek Chisora on the horizon. Can you make any comment on what happened there? Uh, well, we, we 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 did speak to Derek, um, and it just didn't happen. It didn't happen for whatever reason at that time. Um, but but again, hopefully, sort of, there's a fight that can happen in the future. Definitely, big fight. Certainly hope so. You know, I'm not eligible for your weight anymore. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Don't lose any more weight, please. Put a fright when I see you. That's enough now. Just oh. just. Uh, That'll about do 10, ten pound off the cruiserweight limit. Don't do it, mate. You you need to be at every weight if you're six foot five or whatever you're. Yeah. I just want to see how much weight I can lose. It's kind of like it's kind of an experiment I'm doing for myself. Don't mate, because you look like dead man walking. <laughs> uh, even now, just come on. I'll take you for a nice pan of scouts. Put a have a pan of scouts and uh, put a bit of beef back on. Need to put muscle on because I've heard muscle weighs more than fat. So uh, weighs more than fat. Yeah. Okay. Well. Uh, just get on the weights, right. protein, weights. I had a little training session with you, David. Do a session with me, go and see Kerry Kays. Yeah. He'll give you the diet plan and, you know, a, a, a weight training plan. he put weight on you. All right. Yeah. I'll have a strong hard think about this. <laughs> um, all right, well, listen, David, thanks for very much talking to the Cassius and Hilda Show on Box Nation. And like I said, we'll look forward to your return uh, for your European title fight, 17th of July. It's Edwin Tepper. And... Uh, Best of luck in the rest of your camp. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks. Right. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much.